The past few months, there's been something strange happening on Minecraft servers behind the scenes. A variety of server owners have all been reporting that strange users are repeatedly joining their servers of which nobody else should know the IP to. Even stranger, players reported that somehow them and their friends accounts were being logged into by unknown individuals and their servers were being decimated. Somehow, malicious individuals were finding the IPs to private Minecraft servers, famous Minecraft YouTubers SMPs and more. But even worse were the automatic griefing bots, griefing over 1,600 servers automatically in just a few days that are only becoming more and more powerful. What is going on? You probably have heard of some of this stuff before. Server scanning, as it's known, is effectively the process of scanning the internet for Minecraft servers with the port 25565, Minecraft's default port. Some scanners even have accounts which will join the server to check for certain properties, such as if the server is in offline mode or if it has a whitelist enabled. And while server scanning has only really become a more known thing as of the past few years, people have been scanning for servers for years now. There are posts dating back close to 10 years, of people doing the exact same thing. As I mentioned, server scanning wasn't really a commonly known thing, or well, that was until one to two years ago. Server scanning ultimately was popularized by infamous griefing group The Fifth Column, who developed their own server scanner called Koppenheimer, a bot which not only scanned hundreds of thousands of servers, but also provided nice details about them, such as the version they were running, the server software they used, the players online, the players who had been on the server recently, and much, much more. Furthermore, Fifth Column would also create a mod that would allow you to easily browse and join the server scanned in-game. As you can imagine, they use their newfound power to partake in a slight amount of tomfoolery, targeting streamers and YouTubers servers and griefing and trolling them while they were live to elicit reactions. To date, the fifth column have griefed over 600 Twitch streamer servers and uploaded videos to their channels about them, have joined large YouTubers private servers while they were live streaming on them, crashed the Quackity SMP for three days straight with an exploit, found and griefed Jeb's private Minecraft server and killed him, found and griefed the Mojang officer's private servers and griefed them, and even got the attention of Notch on Twitter. Many of their members would be banned from the game for 10 years because of all their griefing, and they have a very notorious reputation in the Minecraft Minecraft community, clearly taking inspiration from the likes of famous old Minecraft griefing groups such as Team Abolition, of which they have also griefed with. After various videos would be made about the fifth column's various escapades and their reputation amongst the Minecraft community, especially Anarchy players, grew and grew, it was only natural that the general public, primarily players of 2B2T, would want to get their hands on Koppenheimer or similar so they could scan for servers to grief themselves. Thus, many servers scanners were made, and over the past year, an increasing number of server admins have begun reporting that strange users were attempting to join their servers, or were actually joining their private servers of which nobody else knew the IP to. In fact, it got to the point that so many server owners were posting about accounts trying to join their servers in utter confusion that memes of such posts were even made. Anywho, notably, a public server scanner known as Server Seeker was created around this time. Server Seeker was created by a developer named Dam, who was inspired by YouTuber Live Overflow's video about server scanning, where his audience found the server he was playing on, deciding to make his own scanner as a fun project. The Server Seeker Discord now has almost 10,000 members and functions like so. Basically, it's a Discord bot where you can search for servers from specific countries with certain play accounts on certain versions which are cracked or premium, vulnerable to bungee spoofing, and much more. You can also search for players, viewing servers they've joined in the past. It's very cool. But while Dam created Server Seeker as a fun project with no malicious intent, a very large portion of the individuals using these server scanners don't quite have the same positive intentions in mind. This is the big issue with server scanning. Considering the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of servers that exist, there of course would be a small but still significant amount of private servers run by individuals who don't know much about Minecraft that often don't have the whitelist enabled as disabled by default. Furthermore, these individuals don't know about server scanning. They are completely oblivious to how vulnerable their server truly is. For all they know, the only people who can join their server are their friends they gave the IP to. This makes 
system ripe for the picking for griefers and trolls who join their server and wreak havoc on it before the unknowing server owners even have a clue as to what's going on. As Dam tells me, he often gets reports of individuals using Server Seeker to find vulnerable servers with either no whitelist, which they can connect to and cause damage to, or finding cracked servers with no authentication in place, of which they can log in as operator accounts and destroy the server, as we'll get into later. And while Dam has blacklisted individuals in the past, it's mostly pointless, as they just use an alt account or switch to a different scanner. Server scanning isn't very complicated, dozens of other server scanners exist, so it's not like he has given griefers access to a one-of-a-kind tool or anything here. And this has led to communities of dedicated griefers becoming established. Dedicated just like how some of you could become a dedicated channel Patreon and get access to world downloads and plugins from past videos, uncensored videos of mine, access to 49 of my old videos from 2014, and exclusive access to my most prized and historical Minecraft worlds from 2011, all of which has never been made public before. Oh, and be sure to become a dedicated subscriber as well. No pressure. Anyways, one such YouTuber and community I came across is that of a channel known as Shrekt or Ogmer. I first heard of this channel when a confused server owner DM'd me on Twitter, mentioning a user had somehow been logging in as him and his friend and using their accounts to grief the server over and over, multiple times, whilst promoting a YouTube channel. Going to Ogma's channel, you can see he has an extensive catalogue of videos where he joins in grief servers, primarily crack servers, uploading almost daily. He has a very distinct griefing style, where he will join a server, teleport to each player and blast them and their bases with fireballs, spawning renamed withers on them, promoting his Discord, YouTube channel, Minecraft server and more, then using fill commands to effectively edit out spawn and bases, creating scoreboards, telling the server owner he's renovating their server and more. And he's not just griefing one server per video. Most of these videos he joins upwards of 10 servers and griefs them, and he's uploading and streaming almost daily. So how is he able to grief so many servers every day? What's going on? Well, I got in contact with him to find out. Basically, Ogma used the Server Seeker add-on for a popular cheat client, Meteor Client, which allows you to do what Server Seeker does, but in-game. Notably though, you can see a server's players and DOM crack servers can actually click one button to log in as those players. For some context, crack servers are Minecraft servers running in offline mode, meaning that players who are playing a pirated or cracked version of the game, where you don't need an account, only a username, can join. Because all you need is a username, technically anybody can use any username and log into the server. Big public crack servers prevent this by using authentication plugins that make you register and log in with a password in-game, but many of these private crack servers do not do that. And simply enabling a whitelist won't help either, because like I said, anybody can use any username and log in, so you could just log in as a user which is already whitelisted. Ogma will log into all the server's accounts until he finds one which is opt, and once he does, the server is as good as gone. Using Meteor Client as well as add-ons specifically tailored for OP griefing, the server stands no chance. Now, I know what you might be thinking. This guy sounds like a total ass griefing random kids crack Minecraft servers, right? Well, in a way, yes, that's undeniable, but Ogma, also in his Discord, which he promotes in his griefs, has a list of resources and tutorials for server owners that show them how to secure their server and ensure they won't be griefed in the future. He even gives out commands to remove the scoreboards and other features he employs whilst griefing. So at least once a server is griefed, he does tell them how to prevent future griefs. That being said, he also provides tutorials for other griefers and his fans, and has created a small community of about 600 individuals inspired by him. He even has his Meteor client mods and configs public so his viewers can replicate what he does to the T. Now, understandably, Ogmer's actions are rather divisive. Many of his videos have more dislikes than likes, with a variety of server owners calling him an asshole in the comments for annihilating their servers. But at the end of the day, he's right about one thing. If it wasn't me, it would have been someone else tomorrow. And I guess it's better that at least he tells the server owners how to fix their vulnerabilities, than leaving them in an utter state of confusion. Ogma isn't the only griefer using server scanners though. This is Mountains of Lava Incorporated, a channel run by an individual called Eten Yao, who fittingly calls himself a friendly asshole. Like Ogma, he griefs servers, but he has his own unique twist. 
While Ogma prioritizes cracked servers, Itan Yao prioritizes YouTuber servers and SMPs while also having a unique and artistic griefing style. Notably, he has griefed the Lapata SMP, an SMP with a variety of popular YouTubers, the Himlands SMP, an SMP with YouTubers such as Yes Smarty Pie, who has 6 million subscribers. He even made it into one of his videos with almost 3 million views, as well as a variety of other big YouTubers SMPs. Itan Yao has a more traditional griefing style, since he can't get op as these servers are not cracked, and his griefing tool of choice are his mountains of lava casts, of which he created a mod for that can automatically build them for him. These are super annoying to clean up due to the amount of layers they have, by the way. In fact, Itan Yao is quite the griefer. His meteor add-ons are used by a lot of other griefers, downloaded over 25,000 times. But that's not even his biggest project. Itan Yao also created his own server scanner bot, which he named Skynet. Currently, Skynet is private, with only 10 individuals able to access and use it, and unlike Server Seeker, is designed with the sole intent Griefing. Skynet currently has scanned over 1 million servers in the brief time it has been operational, able to distinguish between active and stale servers, as well as much more. But what makes Skynet so impressive are its terminators. When I contacted Itan Yao and asked him about Skynet, he told me he had begun a new project as of only a few days ago called the Terminators. Effectively, these are bots which he has created able to find and join vulnerable servers and grief them entirely automatically without the need for any human intervention. I set up a demonstration server with some alts scattered around the world in mock-up bases so it could show me how it works. And basically, the terminators join a server, find out who is opt by logging into all the user's accounts, teleport around to the player's spawning named withers and setting the entire area to lava, completely annihilating the server, all entirely automatically. In the roughly four days the Terminators of Skynet had been running, they had terminated over 1,600 servers, effectively destroying them entirely. That's about 400 servers a day griefed beyond repair, far more than any human could ever even get close to achieving. Now, it's still early days for Skynet and the Terminators, but these bots have some serious power and could even eventually target vulnerable premium servers without a whitelist. The Terminators also leave a nice email address for the griefed server admins, and as such, Itan Yao has received dozens of angry emails from confused and upset server owners, bewildered by the state of their server they return to. This is truly the next level of griefing. Throughout this entire video, you may have been thinking, why? Why do these individuals set out to grief and cause as much destruction as possible to innocent players? I asked Ogmer that very question, and he tells me he does it because he saw that there was a rare opportunity to grief servers before they are all griefed. While server scanning has existed for some time, as I mentioned, it wasn't until recently that it gained public notoriety, and currently there still exists lots of vulnerable servers available to grief. It's like how back in 2010 and 2011, public Minecraft servers were much more vulnerable to griefing, but over time they became ungriefable and those who didn't grief them missed their chance. As Ogmer mentions, currently or at least when he started griefing a few months ago, there weren't as many people griefing. It was like 2010 and 2011 all over again, but it would only be a matter of time before the masses became aware of it and there wouldn't be many vulnerable servers left to grief. As many modern day griefers are, Ogmer is heavily inspired by Team Abolition and sees this as his opportunity to live out his childhood dreams of griefing griefing servers just as they did. But that still leaves one big question. What's the point of griefing in the first place? Well, I believe I can answer that one myself. While I don't grief anymore, when I was younger, I used to love joining servers and use x-ray to find people's bases and grief them, as well as just generally messing around with people. It's really just fun. There's a certain thrill you get from doing something you aren't meant to be doing, and getting reactions out of people. Not justifying it or saying it's good, but griefing is a form of trolling that is incredibly entertaining. Entertaining. It's as simple as that. As for Itan Yao, well, his reasoning for creating the Terminators and Skynet was a bit more goal motivated. Itan Yao wants to burn as much as he can in Minecraft and cause as much destruction as possible. That's his ultimate goal, and in doing so, he wants to get rid of cracked servers because it lessens the workload to achieve that ultimate goal, causing as much destruction as possible. He says he got bored of griefing cracked servers because you can get op and it's super easy to destroy everything with just a few mods, so he decided to automate the process instead. Itan Yo is a Minecraft griefing purist and prefers the classic manual griefing style, which would be a time waste on cracked servers where you could do much more damage with mere commands. He prefers spending his time manually griefing premium servers and YouTuber servers block by block instead, but he still has to achieve his ultimate goal, meaning cracked servers have to be destroyed as well, so he 
he's tasked the bots with that instead. So I guess we won't have to worry about the Terminators invading our normal servers, for now at least. Now, not everyone is okay with all the griefing and chaos currently affecting innocent players. As such, some anti-griefing strategies have been employed. The first of which is by a developer named Matt. Matt created a server scanner called Matt Scan, which looks for vulnerable servers and joins them, leaving an automated message in the game chat, letting the server's players and admins know that the server is vulnerable and telling them to enable whitelist or to turn on online mode. His website also provides further information about how to secure a server. And this this has worked, you can see there are many server owners who have posted in the admincraft subreddit about a user called Matt joining their server. It is helping to raise awareness. Furthermore, players have also set up what's known as honeypot servers, fake server traps designed to catch malicious server scanners and report them, as well as making griefing harder by filling up server scanner databases with junk. Basically, these are fake servers that can only really be discovered by server scanners that fill up server scanner databases as well as log the usernames and IPs of server scanners to report them to the bot host in order to try to get them shut down. To counteract these, server scanners have also made honeypot filters so their databases don't get full of fake servers. Some of these honeypots get pings from server scanners every few minutes, also demonstrating just how many server scanners there are out there, in public and in private. But beyond that, there's really nothing the anti-griefers can do. Griefers can run rampant on unknowing servers without anything to stop them, and who knows the extent to which griefing will evolve in the near future. If you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out my Patreon where you can get access to uncensored videos of mine, world downloads and plugins from past videos, access to 49 of my old videos from 2014, as well as much much more. Check it out here. Be sure to subscribe, thank you all so much for watching.